Lots of important news breaking by the minute. Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison will cover that entire situation. We've got matchups, starts of the week, and a whole lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the video. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. And we want to thank Bombas for supporting today's show. Bombas' mission is simple, and it's one that I can get behind. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So this holiday, when you give the gift of Bombas to someone on your list, you're also giving to someone else in need. It's called a give give. I like you it. You ever heard of a give give? I have, and I'm wearing Bombas right now. Bombas designed their socks, shirts, underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Soft, seamless, tagless, and uh, <clears throat> luxuriously cozy. Oh! Yeah, that's right. Uh, in fact, the coziest gifts for everyone on your list. We were just doing a Spitballers podcast talking about, you know, the Christmas Eve cozy pajama mm -hmm. gift. Go to bombas.com slash footballers and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash footballers for 20% off bombas.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Dalvin time. It might be. What is happening? <laughs> You're going to get into it that quick. <laughs> this is what people want to hear about. And this is a fantasy football show. This is a serious show. We take things very seriously. And we talk about only the serious things. Well. But welcome into the podcast. Welcome in. Yeah, Andy, Mike, and Jason. The fantasy footballers. Back with you, and a lot of headlines being made this morning about Dalvin Cook. Not expected to have played. I mean, we said on yesterday's show he wasn't going to be in there. He is marked as out on a number of platforms. He's made his way into IRs already. Now, the reason for that is because his shoulder came out a few days ago. <laughs> yes. Just to be clear, he, he dislocated his shoulder days ago. This is accurate. However, and I buy this. The Minnesota Vikings lost to the Detroit Lions. Sure. And if they hadn't, we wouldn't be talking about this today. That's what I believe. Now, there are a lot of people out there, and l let me give you the headline news if you hadn't heard yet, which is that there have been a number of reports that Dalvin Cook is trending to play tonight. In fact, since the initial report, it's looked even more positive, yeah, they, pointing towards him playing. They found that uh, bath. From Wanted, I remember that oh, bath, the milk bath, <laughs> the milk <laughs> bath, and they, they somehow they they made it for real because Dalvin Cook should not be able to play football right now. It's but not the normal timeline no. at all. Uh, but they're saying that he might be able to go with a device that he's wearing, and and <laughs> that sounds that sounds really good. We're going to put him in the device. This should hold your shoulder <laughs> in place. It's, Don't yeah. worry about it. Just play. Um, but but you're right. Everything as of the time of recording right now has seemed like the expectation is he's playing tonight. Okay, so Thursday night football against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who yeah. over the last four weeks are the single worst team against fantasy, against running, fantasy backs. running backs. So how are you handling... Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. Yes, for some, this is a maybe good news, right? You're fighting for a playoff spot. You lost Dalvin Cook. You almost conceded. Mm -hmm. uh, you're laying down in the grave. Just You're, you're pulling <laughs> over some of the yeah. dirt. Don't worry. I'll take care of this. And, and then suddenly you sit up with this news and you say, I mean, like, I have Dalvin everywhere. I may not have enough time between right now and game time tonight to go into each league and put him in. That's how many places I have him. But for many people, this is a nightmare because they had Alexander Madison. They don't have Dalvin Cook. It is a great matchup. I mean, the the Steelers 
they, they've given up 30-plus points to opposing running backs in three of the past four weeks, and the only week they didn't, it was 25, and it was to Devonta Freeman and company. So you're looking at a situation where they've just utterly stopped being able to stop the run. And now, for some, you're in the playoffs, and you wish Dalvin wasn't playing. Right. Because after tonight, you get 10 days off, and then the playoffs start next week. There's part of me that wishes that was the case, but the truth is, is if he makes it through tonight – Without re-injury, he will get 10 days off to recover. He will be a solid, bona fide start going into the fantasy playoffs. Correct. And so, how am I handling it? I'm playing Dalvin Cook if he's active. This team has shown that they're willing to go through all of this, get him back in the lineup when they already have a valid backup. Like, Madison is a productive backup. Mm -hmm. And yet, they still want Dalvin back out there. So, there's no way I'm playing Madison over Dalvin. Uh, but, there's no way I'm playing Madison over Dalvin either. If Dalvin is back, he's their starter. That being said, I'm not necessarily starting Dalvin as if I would usually start Dalvin as a top three running back currently. And obviously, this is this is fresh breaking news. Um, I have him as my running back 20. He's behind guys like Saquon and uh, David Montgomery and some of these other uh, players that right now I would feel more comfortable starting them ahead of Dalvin Cook um, and I've got Alexander Madison at running back 35 I do think that there will be more of a timeshare than usual and depending on the game script and how the game goes um, it could it could have an effect I, I don't think that this is going to be a situation where they say we're giving Dalvin the ball 30 times tonight um, take a seat Alexander this is we need Dalvin for all the important drives, all the important plays, and we'll see how the game plays out. It is nice that Dalvin, for your roster, I mean, he's one of the league's leaders in 15-plus yard runs. So he doesn't need, like, I mean, look at what Damian Harris just did on 11 carries, right? You could have that kind of a game out of Dalvin Cook. Mike, I'd love to know where you are with the whole situation. And I will say this before you, you, you comment. Please, please, please don't take today's <laughs> show as the final word. Right. Like, follow the news. We'll post about it. Yeah, we are up to game time. We're reacting in real time uh, on this podcast. I, I think I'm pretty in lockstep with you guys. Of if Dalvin plays, I'm going to play him uh, because uh, he apparently passed whatever tests he needed to pass. The team thinks he's healthy enough to go. The matchup is great, uh, so Dalvin would be in. But I also think that Madison isn't relegated to the bench. He's he's still a flex type of a play which it's Thursday so I'm not saying put him in your flex I'm saying you put him in the running back position but you're playing him as, as that tier of a fantasy option for this week uh but this is this is high risk. high risk this is very high risk where yes they're saying Dalvin is fine but with this type of an injury Dalvin could he can go out First play takes a good shot on that shoulder, and then he's out. So right. like, this is like he's just he's so good that I'm willing to inherit and take that risk on. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> I'm watching that. I'm watching tonight's game. If I start Dalvin, I'm covering my eyes and just peeking through the cracks. Yeah, every single yeah. tackle is going to be. Oh, scary. it's going to be. Oh uh, man, our own it's Matthew Betts. This is his his quote. He's our injury uh, expert. Says research across the board is conclusive that early return to play following shoulder dislocation significantly increases re-injury risk. So you're you're taking a gamble, but I don't think most most managers do not have a roster that's like. Okay, I I've got three better options than a risky Dalvin Cook. No, most of them are saying, "Hallelujah, I don't have to play Adrian Peterson this week." Yeah, or it's it's like Chuba Hubbard. Maybe you you were able to grab him a week ago after Christian McCaffrey went down, and you're like, "Well, I'm going to play Chuba against the Atlanta Falcons," which is not a bad play. Mm -hmm. But I would still put Dalvin Cook in over Chuba. I don't think Dalvin Cook. I don't think any other running back plays tonight except for Dalvin Cook. And the reason being is this is something his body does. He's got experience with this. Like, he actually has a problem with dislocating shoulders, which you're like, okay, that's not a good thing. But it also means he knows what it is to recover from them and what the re-injury risks are. And I think that gives him more leeway to prove to the team that he can play. We have 
news, other news to talk about. We have the fantasy forecast matchups today. Starts the week. Boom, boom, kicker. Oh, boy. There is a lot going on, and we even have Never Not Working. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Oh, the Foot Clan, we work a little harder than everyone else. Um, well, the nice thing about... talking about the Foot Clan. Yes. The and, foot, and us. Yes, and us. Well, the nice thing is, y'all don't have to. You just sit back and enjoy the ride. We'll do the deep dives and the research. And this week, what we deep dived, deep doved? Deep, no, it's not deep, deep dove. Deep, uh, it definitely can't be deep dove. Uh, well, you you say it can't. I can say anything I want. <laughs> um, but we took a, a deep look at a bunch of different depth charts and wide receiver cores, and because we've talked a lot about how defense have changed. You, you you've got Washington and the Giants who just are terrible. The the Chiefs defense one to target, and then as the season has come along, you're like, oh no, these defenses have, have got it going. Well, the same thing happens within a wide receiver core good examples um mike williams historically has always been a downfield guy that's all he is a deep threat through the first five weeks all of a sudden he was leading the league in intermediate uh targets um or deontay johnson's the opposite he's just a slot guy a ppr machine it's chase claypool who's the deep threat guy well no deontay is leading chase claypool in deep targets um so we wanted to take a look and we've we came up with two uh, wide receiver cores that I think are important to look at to recognize where it's at now, which might not be what our expectation is and what we think is going to happen going forward. So the first is the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, Jamar Chase. Yeah, what is going on? On fire. Unbelievable. He is the future. He is the brightest star. And T. Higgins is dead. You don't need to start him. You could drop him. You could whatever. Move on. But that was in the beginning of the year. Um, early on Higgins was hurt. He missed weeks three and four sputtered in weeks five and six. Um, and it was obvious, you know, what this wide receiver core looked like. It's start Jamar chase under all conditions and bench T Higgins. But since week seven, it's been very, very different. The Bengals, uh, are scheming for Higgins. He is a focus. He's not an afterthought and opposing defenses are obviously trying to, uh, combat Jamar chase. Uh, Rich Rebar had this tweet to just illustrate the example of what's happening on deep shots. Through the first seven weeks, you had Jamar Chase, 10 of 17, 384 yards, four touchdowns. Since week seven, on those deep shots, he's one of nine for 16 yards. Defenses have changed. Uh, T. Higgins, meanwhile, on those same deep targets, the first seven weeks, he was 0 for 5, and since then, he's 9 for 14, 239 yards and two touchdowns. So what are the takeaways? Like, What can we assume going forward? Um, and I think that the assumption going forward is that both of these guys are very involved. Uh, the targets are there. The deep shots are there for both. I think that Jamar Chase is not necessarily a guaranteed top 12 guy uh, You know, on, you, that you start in every single situation. And T. Higgins is someone that is absolutely a, a fantasy asset. Now, more context needs to go to that. We, we were talking in the office yesterday. He was so banged up during this game at the end of the game, T. Higgins, and now he missed practice yesterday. So we'll have to we'll have to pay attention to Thursday's today's practice report to see if he's limited um, or practicing in full, or or if he misses the practice. Him being T. Higgins, but if he's active and practicing and playing, I think T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. There's now an argument to be made between them going forward uh, for fantasy, at least. Uh, this season I think it's it, what's very interesting is the stat of since week five the target share and the air yard share between T Higgins and Jamar Chase is nearly identical you're talking a percentage point difference since week five and so what, what that data is telling me is what's happened to Jamar Chase and what's happened to Higgins it's just the natural variance of football this isn't T Higgins has replaced Jamar Chase. It's Higgins has hit on his opportunities, and Jamar Chase hasn't. And he was, we mentioned it, but he was one bobble uh, away from a massive touchdown, which completely changes the landscape of last week for Jamar Chase versus T. Higgins. So this is a, you play the both with confidence, uh, but the variance will hit, and you 
it's probably not going to be both of them smashing on the same exact Is week. this the best dynasty tandem in, in the NFL? Uh, that's a good question. I've seen Di- dynasty Hig- wise, yeah, I I've think so. I've seen T. Higgins in the top 20 in terms of dynasty wide receivers. Yeah, and, I mean, and obviously very young, Jamar is one or two. Very it, young, connected to Joe Burrow. Who, yeah, I mean, the, who, who are the other, I would say the Cowboys with uh, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, and Dak. That's a good combo for right. dynasty. I don't know if there's any others that I would throw out as as good a a combo. That yeah, that's why um, I mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. And, th- and then the other uh, wide receiver core to take a look at is the Los Angeles Rams. Obviously, they lost Robert Woods. Um, we're want to know new toy in Odell Beckham. How are they utilizing these guys? Van Jefferson's role has changed. Uh, that's my biggest uh, takeaway. Um, the first six weeks, he was only averaging 4.3 targets a game. From week seven on, 7.3 targets. From week seven, he's seen more targets in the 10 to 19 area of the field than Cooper Cup. And the last two weeks, he was the wide receiver nine and the wide receiver 20 with 17 total targets. He is becoming a really important part of this offense. Um, and Beckham has stepped in, and he is being used down the field a ton um, it's kind of a blend between Deshaun Jackson's role and Robert Woods. Um, he is tied for the second most 20 plus yard targets in the NFL over the last two weeks. His A dot as a Ram is 16.9, which would be by far the highest of his career. So he is being used um, as a down the field guy um, when they are, you know, away from the end zone. And so you've got to take that, you know, information and look at the upcoming schedule and try to, you know, Minnesota and Baltimore in the fantasy playoffs. Those teams give up a lot of big plays. Mm -hmm. Baltimore, they live for giving up big plays. That sounds like Odell Beckham to me. Um, Arizona, high over under this coming week. Tough defense. Maybe more of those intermediate, maybe the Van Jefferson role. Um, And then you got Seattle in between that with uh, Jamal Adams gone. So really, both of these guys, uh, all all four wide receivers, I think you can pretty much start. I'm really excited for Beckham as the season closes out because he's delivered. He's obviously had his best output with Stafford Stafford. I think one of the reasons he wanted to go there was Baker. Wasn't the kind of quarterback that was going to just let it rip. Even when it didn't, you know what I mean? He, he, he needed to see Beckham completely open. And I think Stafford is willing to take those chances and the team is willing to scheme plays to Beckham so obviously Van Jefferson's been very good Beckham has scored in consecutive weeks there's a lot to uh, be encouraged by there so you can get up to 100% dandruff protection that is never never not not working wait what (laughs) I sold you out (laughs) Uh, with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com my heart wasn't in it I was going up so we would have like this oh, cool. Oh, the peak, yeah. the pinnacle. Jason didn't even try. I mean, Jason didn't even. I was letting you two ride. I took the segment. You guys could take the clothes. Nice. You guys suck. All right, let's blitz the rest of the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Isn't the new policy to just let the producers do it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, tonight's no. game. <laughs> <laughs> Feedback on Twitter says. No, don't do that again. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Well, that was fun for me. Adam Thielen out tonight. Dalvin Cook, we talked about it. He's going to play barring a setback, and um, the wa- the ride is going to be wild. It's going to be a a very interesting evening. Mike Williams, yes. news yesterday that he was placed on the reserve COVID list, was a close contact with Keenan Allen. He is unvaccinated, which means he is out a minimum of five days from the contact. Brandon Staley referred to him as day to day. There is the opportunity for him to play Sunday. The variance on this entire offense is is very wide right now. There, <laughs> yeah, it is. It could be no Keenan, no Williams. It could be Keenan and Williams. It could be one or the other. And um, Austin Eckler was also limited at practice on Wednesday due to the ankle that knocked him out of the end of the game. So we'll keep you posted. Tomorrow is going to matter a lot, and you're going to want to. Uh, Pay close attention to the Injury Blitz podcast from Matthew Betts as well. Mark Ingram, news broke yesterday. He's been placed on the reserve COVID list. Alvin Kamara will be back. Taysom Hill, full participant. This is a big deal because Ingram is, you know, potentially out this week with Kamara's return. 
Hope Kamara's healthy. Yes. Against the Jets, <laughs> this, this is a big week. Yeah, you could even see, what, Tony Jones get some opportunities? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, he maybe. was he was a healthy scratch uh, last week, but he is healthy, and if Mark Ingram is unable to go, uh, Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. is a fine uh, dart throw of getting a touchdown. Is it, it, uh, Pretty much every week, there are multiple running backs that get a touchdown against the Jets. All right, the uh, other news from the Bears, Justin Fields will start this week against the Packers, so that's number one. Good luck. I believe that's in Green Bay. Yes. That's going to be a good first rodeo for Justin Fields. David Montgomery didn't practice Wednesday. Shoulder, groin, and glute. So it's all... Shoulder, groin, glute. It's all hurting. Shoulder, shoulder groin, and glute. <laughs> shoulder, groin. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I doubt he's singing it the same way you are. Oh, no. yeah, he's not, but I need a beat. Shoulder, groin, and glute. <laughs> it's pretty good. They didn't want to just say body, so they <laughs> they labeled it. Um, that's the, it's all the same injuries that you got from foosball. Oh man, that shoulder, was an intense groin, game. Glute. <laughs> shoulder, groin, and glute. Mm. Allen Robinson returned to practice limited. He expects to play. Uh, well, sorry, let me backtrack that. We think he might play this week against the Packers. 49er injury news, which is a new segment on the show. That's a permanent fixture. Debo Samuel did not practice on Wednesday. We'll see. Elijah Mitchell. Not just a concussion, but it had an MRI. It showed knee irritation. I want to mention they added Brian Hill to their practice squad. So could be an indication that they're not expecting Elijah Mitchell or Jeff Wilson to be available. Uh, it is also possible that Wilson is uh, unavailable as well. Yeah, I, I would say that while it's still early, you know, we, we've got several days before Sunday, we'll know more information. As of right now, I think... I know mine, and I think yours, Andy. I haven't heard you, Mike, but our our expectation is that Elijah Mitchell is not going to play this That's week. That's what I expect. So too. if you have Elijah Mitchell, you need to make the moves now in preparation. Uh, if Jermichael Hasty is still available, which is is still possible in um, some of these leagues, he's a must must pick up. You can learn a lot by these moves. You know, the signing of Brian Hill. They brought in running backs to work out. You also have a couple of other moves that I want to give people before – the weekend that might be indications last week, the Rams waited until like game day to bring up, uh, Makai. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. Sergeant. They brought him up yesterday. So that could be an indication that Daryl Henderson is not expected to be, he might be active, but he might be in the same situation as last right. week. Um, so that's, that's one. And, uh, What's the other one that I... <laughs> Maybe uh, the Cowboys? Tony, yeah, Tony Pollard? Well, look, there is news on Tony Pollard. He didn't practice where you did have Ezekiel Elliott Ellie, fully practice. And yeah. they signed uh, Jason's guide, Ito Smith, to the practice squad. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Cowboys. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and going going back to the Sony Michelle, um, Daryl Henderson news, if you listen to Sean McVay, he had this large quote talking about yeah. how... You know, no, Henderson's important. We're still going to use him. But Sony is, like, doing great. want to really get him. He's a rhythm runner. we got to get him going. And so it was almost like I'm expecting, like, when Daryl Henderson comes back, I don't think it's going to go straight to, the, you know, it was all Daryl Henderson and right. Sony got, you know, a couple, got scraps. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm concerned about it, too. T. Higgins didn't practice. We'll monitor that. Joe Mixon didn't practice due to an illness. It's not believed to be COVID-related. Tevin Coleman is in the concussion protocol. Implications there for the Jets running back room. And then Elijah Moore, this was big news, day-to-day -day with a quad injury, didn't practice Wednesday. They hope to have him back, but it's not a guarantee right now, and he's been right. on fire. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper, join the breaking alerts channels faster than every other source. And before we get into the fantasy forecast, I want to thank today's sponsors. And I'm talking about Hello Tushy because I am a bidet man. That's right. Um, bidet we, bro. Oh, we are bidet bros around here. And if you want to give your family and friends something memorable, more than a gift card this holiday well, they season, will remember it. something you know that, that is unique yet useful, a tech gadget, if you will, 
Hello Tushy's bidets are the way to go. It checks all of the boxes. Stop spreading your business around your beehole with toilet <laughs> Whoa, paper. Oh, hey it now. is it is absolutely disgusting. Stop What's, spreading the, the business. Oh, the business. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it this holiday season. Clean up your life. Don't just take a dry I'm piece of paper today. and wipe poop around and hope, yeah, we're good. Wash wash it. Yes. Wash your butt. Agreed. And your family, you can look at them in the eyes and say, I know you don't have I a bidet. I washed my butt today. <laughs> I know you don't have a bidet, so I know you've got poop on your butt. I'm going to... I'm gonna. Do something special for you this Christmas. I'm going to get them uh, a Hello Tushy bidet for a cleaner, nicer bum. Give the gift of a clean bum to yourself or your loved ones this holiday season and get 10% off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash footballers. That's hellotushy.com slash footballers for 10% off and free shipping. And Foot Clan, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness, preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp, they are here to assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. It's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. I've had a couple people reach out. You know, in the DMs, like, uh, what what was the name of that site? Like, I need to reach out. And I'm like, that's fantastic. It's and it's better help. And like, congratulations. Like, I'm 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 proud. I'm happy that you are going out and getting the help that you need. Because look, mental health is a real thing that you need to take care of, and it's okay. It's okay to reach out and say, I need to talk to somebody, a professional who can help me work through these issues. And better help. They want you to start living a happier life today and it's more affordable than the traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available visit betterhelp.com slash footballers that's better h-e-l-p join the over two million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help mental health with the help of an experienced professional in fact so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states special offer for fantasy footballers listeners get 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash footballers Fantasy Forecast. All right, let's kick it off here with the Baltimore Ravens at 8-4, and four, traveling to Cleveland to take on the Browns, who are 6-6. Six and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Browns minus 2.5 at home. Over-under is 43 points. I do like the Browns in this one myself. And um, this is a big game for Cleveland. I mean, this is playoff potential. Massive. Uh, Baltimore beat them 16 to 10. So well under that 43 point line. The last time we saw these teams, you look at this game and the way the Ravens offense has been trending and you have some hesitation. At least I do where the Browns off the bye, at home control the clock. You know, you, you play Lamar, but you do it with a little bit of trepidation and, I just don't think this is going to be a big week for their pass catchers. What do you guys think about this matchup? Well, I'm taking the under. Um, the, that you know, if you look back, we've been talking about the struggles, um, you know, recently from the Baltimore Ravens offense. They just, even when they're winning these games, they just have not been able to put up points. But I and and the Browns are coming off a bye, and hopefully that helps because Baker has been just so beat up. Mm -hmm. But their offense has been worse than the Baltimore Ravens' offense. Before the bye, they scored 10 points in a loss, 10 points, or I'm sorry, 13 points in a win, and 7 points in a loss. They have they not... They should trade for Beckham. <laughs> um, yeah, they have not been good offensively. Um, I am not quite on the Browns' side here, but um, I, I don't expect a barn burner. This is a divisional beat -em up game. Uh, defensive minded. I'm not in love with it for for fantasy. Even though there's there's obviously a lot of pieces here: Chubb, Lamar Jackson, uh, Mark Andrews that are locks for lineups. Yeah, I think Hollywood's where I get worried. And um, understandable. The Browns' defense sixth against opposing wide receivers over the last six weeks, tenth on the year. So Hollywood, uh, since week six, the wide receiver thirty two. There's some trepidation going on the road here. They talked this morning about the Ravens maybe doing some more hurry-up offense. 
You know, more plays total would help this offense in production. Rashad Bateman, you got to bench him until he proves it after the goose last week. And then Devonta Freeman, uh, that's your opportunity there. I think he's pretty solid in this game. And I don't think Lamar can throw an interception when he hands it off to Devonta Freeman. That is accurate. Uh, those are only when he targets Mark Andrews. Uh, but you do uh, – I agree with you. Andy Freeman is in as a a, a fine running back too. Mark Andrews, the, the Browns are 29th against fantasy tight ends over the last six weeks, and the, the targets are there. I'm still – I'm still playing Hollywood Brown because the volume has been there. Seven targets against Pittsburgh, 10, 13, 12. Like, it hasn't hit. Uh, like The offense is just the, – the passing attack as a whole is is off, but at least the opportunities are there, so I'm not looking at a like a waiver wire option to play over Hollywood Brown. Let me bring up one more name on the other side of the ball because since Beckham left, he's actually been relevant – Jarvis Landry, yeah. the last two weeks that he played football, one against Baltimore, he was the 23rd wide receiver, 10 targets. Obviously, they need pass catchers to, you know, Baker needs somebody here, and he's very reliable. Do you like Landry at home here more than Hollywood Brown? Not more uh, because it takes a lot. You know, it was he had a, a, a big reception. He had a 38-yard catch uh, against Baltimore. It usually takes – at least you know seven receptions before you're happy with, uh, with with what Jarvis Landry has has given you, but the Ravens give up deep plays all the time, and they just lost another piece of their secondary. So he is interesting to me as a, a flex type player. And if you are look, David Njoku is likely out because he's on the COVID list, and. I mean, Jarvis didn't practice on Wednesdays, so, and like he seems to be kind of always banged up these days. If you are in a full desperation underdog mode, I think that you can take the shot on Donovan Peoples Jones of hoping that the one big play hits. That whole story I thought was going to end with you recommending Austin Hooper. Oh that was no, a big, that was a surprise pivot. Oh no, no, I'm I don't want to play Austin Hooper. Uh, I, I'm not saying I really want to play Peoples Jones either, but the the recipe is there for one of the big games to hit this week for him. Yeah, it's really hard to project which wide receiver, so I think I'm avoiding them altogether in a game that I don't expect a lot of fantasy points. The only other name to cover, Kareem Hunt is back. Uh, off the bye, uh, he should be fully healthy, and prior to him leaving to injury, he was dominating for fantasy. So he's, he's just interesting to me. He's someone that in a pinch you could throw into your lineup. You know, I would start him over a Deonta Foreman, type if I if I'm in that level um he will finish the week as the RB I think he'll finish RB RB 24 okay all right so he's flex worthy without question and, yes. and right on the cusp of RB2 Jacksonville at 2 and 10 take on the Tennessee Titans who are 8 and 4 the DraftKings sportsbook line Titans minus 8 and a half at home over under is 43 points low over under but that's a big spread so that gives the Titans almost uh, well, it puts them at 26, Jacksonville at 17. Um, Jacksonville, Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this, and it's like Tennessee hasn't hit their implied team total, that 26 points, three straight weeks. Jacksonville has only done it twice this year. So both teams on average perform worse than even – Vegas' expectations. When I see an eight-and-a-half-point line for Tennessee, I'm going, how are they going to score that many points? Um, and, and this is just complete disrespect to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm not saying it's undeserved. I'm just saying uh, they – here is a team, you know, in, in the, the Tennessee Titans that have lost all their offensive pieces and put up back-to-back 13-point -back games um, – don't have Derrick Henry, don't have A.J. Brown. Uh, hopefully, it seems like they're getting Julio back this game, so he must be able to do something Still not for this activated, offense to though. go. Yeah, not activated, but usually that happens with these IR guys. It has they're to happen by Saturday. Yeah, and, and I expect that it will. Um, my, I, I fully think he will be active and playing. So now Deonta Foreman is really the question here at the running back position. Are you you're favored by eight and a half? So – you know the the sports books are saying 
Tennessee's going to score 25 plus points. Wouldn't you think that Deonta Foreman is a decent play here? He's probably, which I never thought I'd say this, he's probably the safest play on the Titans this week. I think you're right. And, and that's, but he's, he, congratulations for returning to that. But it's not, like the, the backfield, Deonta Foreman and Dontrell Hilliard, the last time we saw those two, they both had a good game against the Patriots. Hilliard had the breakaway touchdown. Foreman was able to be efficient on his touches. Jeremy McNichols returned to practice on Wednesday. I don't know exactly how this backfield will shake up. I mean, McNichols was the one who was the backup for Derrick Henry, and the emergence of Hilliard was because Jeremy Jeremy McNichols was missing time to a concussion. Does he just walk right back into his role? We need. That. I have no confidence in Hilliard with that situation. Right, but I'm. But does. How much does McNichols' return shake things up for all of them where the, he gets on the field over Deonta Foreman a, a couple times here and there? Need to monitor what the coaches are saying about this situation because we just, we just don't know yet. James Robinson on the other side, this is brutal. He was the running back 10 against the Titans early on in the year, but he is banged up. Uh, he's got a foot problem, so it's, he's got a heel issue, he has a knee issue, he's had a fumbling issue recently, and Urban Meyer has gone uh, uh, get off my lawn, coach, where if you fumble, you're off the field, and that included Carlos Hyde, who came in in replacement of Robinson because he fumbled, and then he was off the field. Uh, so where is your guys' confidence with Robinson, who did perform the first time they played, but... Tennessee Titans on the season fifth against fantasy running backs. This is not a matchup that uh, you're trying to exploit. I'm I'm pretty confident in James Robinson. Okay. I, I I'm uh, obviously all those things that you said are true, uh, but he's going to be in my starting lineup because I think he has proven that over and over and over and over in his two year career, he's someone I, that you can rely on. One side note i I don't think that Urban Meyer has done jack crap about that situation what do you mean I don't think he knows what the, the heck I don't think he knows one thing that's going on with the running back room he didn't know earlier this year when they were moving Carlos Hyde and James Robinson in and out on the goal line he had no idea what was going on last week he didn't know what was going on he didn't know that James Robinson got back out on the field for a two plays said it was stupid because of the injury like there were like he doesn't know what's happening on this team. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, Daryl Bevel. That's not what to hear. No, Daryl Bevel's the one that is running the show, and I don't think this is a show you want credit for. <laughs> this is <laughs> Daryl Bevel's uh, really want make to make sure everyone knows the name Urban Meyer. Um, the wide receiver core here. What a great matchup! I'm pretty much avoiding all of them because you don't know. Marvin Jones hasn't done anything. Lavisca Chenault hasn't done anything, and you want to know who the most targeted. Most snap player over you're the last gonna, couple of weeks you're has been. You're going to say Tavon Austin. No, it's Laquan Treadwell. Oh, he's great. actually the guy who's playing the most snaps, getting the most targets, the most yards. Um, so no. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, it is gross. Um, the Las Vegas Raiders at six and six, six and six take on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are eight and four. The DK Sportsbook line here: Chiefs minus nine and a half at home. The over under is forty seven and a half. The Chiefs have fixed the defense. They mm -hmm. they have uh, congealed into a uh, fifth ranked against quarterbacks over the last six weeks, tenth against running backs, seventh against wideouts. That's why the spread's so high. It has to do with not not the offense figuring everything out, but the defense and the fact that the Raiders they don't expect them to be able to do enough against them. And I think that's the headline here. I do have um, <clears throat> something a little special for you. I want to play the game. This is not good. <laughs> it's just... been too long since we've had a surprise game. Oh, these are usually gross. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's let's play a game. The game is called Hunter Renfro or Tyreek Hill. Oh, oh no! Yay! Oh no! Uh, top fifteen weeks. <laughs> Hunter Renfro, Tyreek Hill on the season. Yes, this is on the season. No, it top has... fifteen weeks. Uh, it's got to be Tyreek. Mike? Hunter Renfro. 
You're both right. It is five oh, to five. Okay, thank goodness. Same amount of top thank fifteen goodness. weeks, and I'll spoil we one. We did it. <laughs> I'll spoil one more for you. They also have the same amount of top twenty-four weeks, six each. How about this? Bus games with fewer than eight points. Hunter, Ren- Hunter Renfro or Tyreek Hill? Renfro doesn't bust often, so I will say he has yeah. fewer. Tyreek Hill double the amount, four to two. Games with five plus receptions. Tyreek Hill or Hunter Renfro? Renfro. Yeah. Renfro, 10 to, <laughs> 10 to 9. <laughs> Higher passer rating when targeted. Hunter Renfro or Tyreek Hill? Renfro. <laughs> Hunter Renfro. No, make it stop. 111 passer rating when targeted. Tyreek at 101. So Give me yards. <laughs> this is Nope, sorry, I don't have that one. Um, This is a Hunter Renfro game because I just want people to know that since week nine, he's the wide receiver nine. Yeah, no, he has been awesome. And uh, the absence of uh, Henry Ruggs and them f- figuring that out, some of their running backs, you know, obviously Kenyon Drake is out. Renfro is that slot machine for Vegas. He is uh, tried and true. He's also great. He's just yeah, he's, he's unstoppable good. in short areas. He's, he's not going to take over a game, but when you want a reliable chain mover, it's Renfro. A PPR guy, it's Renfro. I avoided him in my DFS this week because of the matchup. I do think that that's the guy to stop right now. Unless Darren Waller comes back, you're kind of saying, well, let's take Renfro out of the game, and I don't think he's ever experienced a defense saying, we, we've we got to focus our defense on him if – you know, if uh, the honey badger comes down and, uh, you know, it's, it's a little worrisome, but but um, Hunter Info is still an okay start as a flex option. Breaking news. The Cardinals have designated Chase Edmonds to return. Okie dokie. So just a headline there for the Chase Edmonds managers hoping for some playoff magic. Kansas City, five straight wins. But their games have hit the under in six of seven. So, again, that's defense, not offense. Mahomes did go nuclear on this team earlier in the year, 41-14. to 14. I wanted to almost make Patrick Mahomes my start of the week. It didn't feel like a fair thing to do because it's Patrick Mahomes. But he's been playing so poorly and hurting your team so often that consider him a uh, – this an endorsement. I think this is going to be a very, very good game for Patrick Mahomes. The Raiders' defense 25th against quarterbacks uh, over the last six weeks. Yeah, Travis Kelsey historically has destroyed the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, so he's in a great spot to to bounce back. And I'm, I'm with you. Like I think that the Chiefs' offense, in a very exploitable divisional matchup, they get things back on track. Uh, I don't know if long-term, but at least in the short term, you could be – uh, confident in your Chiefs this week. One difficult start start sit question that I've had this week on the Chiefs side is Daryl Williams because last week he was a top 24 running back despite the presence of Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who you've got to love in this game. But the Raiders are giving up a ton of points to running backs, especially over in, in recent history. So Daryl Williams finishes the week. Like, Is it Kareem Hunt or is it Daryl Williams this week? I would go with – I'd go Kareem Hunt. Uh, Daryl Williams, it was eight opportunities. Uh, I expect Kareem – He also caught three passes for 60 yards, so it was it was more – Right, and yeah. I think that – I mean, that's – if you're looking at any statistical thing going, well, that seems like an outlier for a running back to hit three, – turn three receptions into 60 yards. That's not a very common thing. I mean, they're – you're – usually if you see three receptions, like back in Green Bay – he had three receptions for seven yards, uh, or three for 30 against Tennessee, three for 27. He has been over 60, though, three out of the last five weeks in the receiving game. So I think that there's something to be said for what he represents to that offense in the receiving game. Yeah, some of those games, though, were without uh, Clyde. I, right. I would still take Hunt, but that's not to say you can't start Daryl Williams. Uh, the matchup is fantastic against the Raiders, and uh, un- unfortunately for the Raiders, the wheels have kind of fallen off um recently and so i no I, no no you don't think so no i don't i don't think they've fallen off i mean they they won last week right they're in the playoff hunt i did so, not remember it so yeah i mean they this is not going to be an easy game That's this because won- they lost last week they to did the washington football team yeah okay they won the week before then they beat dallas the week okay. before but they have lost four out of their last five games since the bye week no darren waller 
I, I think the wheels are falling off. They've they the, the Dallas game was surprising uh, to everyone, but the last since their bye week in week eight, they've just not been good. Over under is forty seven and a half. This game in Arrowhead last year was a seventy two point combined point total. Yes, yeah, very it was very surprising. Uh, Josh Jacobs, yes, you play him, but. Without Darren Waller, Derek Carr is not an option. Even with Darren Waller, he's not an option in this one. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that is kind of, you know, Hunter Renfro. We, we talked about him. I think that's the end of this matchup. Yep. The New Orleans Saints at 5-7 and seven take on the 3-9 and nine New York Jets. <clears throat> DraftKings Sportsbook line, Saints minus 5.5 on the road. The over-under is 42.5. And, half and oh, do I do it? No, you do not. You don't think so? No. <laughs> I mean, maybe, I but I, I would not do it. You're a madman. Andy's almost upset of the week. That was dumb. That was dumb. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> right? That's dumb, right? I mean, it's almost upset. They but beat Cincinnati this year. That was unexpected. They. That's all I've got. But um. The Saints are just troubled. Is that a fa I mean, like last week. For sure. De Deontay Harris was, uh, I don't know, he was their best weapon, and now he's gone. Mark Ingram, probably gone. Taysom Hill, look, it, he can do a lot for your fantasy team, but he can also do a lot for the Jets, okay? He can make mistakes that put the Jets in a position to win this ball game, and I just like this is make or break for the Saints. The season's over if they lose this ball game. It it one hundred percent is. I mean, it, at five and eight, you're not going to recover. But they get their best player back, their best offensive player. Alvin Kamara is expected to play, and the combination of Taysom and Kamara to me is enough firepower to you're probably right. to handle the Jets. You're probably right. Now there there was some initial early off season concern, you know regarding the amount of passing work that Kamara will get with Taysom Hill, is that concern still present for you? Well, the, the concern was twofold. It was not only the passing work, but also the vultured touchdowns around the goal line that Taysom Hill could take away from Kamara. And while both of those things exist, what doesn't exist is anyone else to catch the ball. Uh, the the Traquan Smith, Juwan Johnson, Marquez Callaway combination says that Alvin Kamara will be fine. I'm not worried at all, especially when he's probably going to get three to 15 rushing touchdowns against the Jets. Yeah, the Jets can't really stop the run. That's Correct. not something they're in, they're not into that. Um, you know, last week, in, Philadelphia ended up the, the second best backfield uh, on the week. So there are... Lots of opportunities for Hill and Kamara. I am so upset that Elijah Moore is injured right now, and that he's been, you know, that he's missing practice with the quad injury. That you know, it, he might play, and if he plays, great. But I've got a lot less confidence, you know, if he's got an injured quad to go out there and do it. But he's been on fire, and this matchup was so good. The Saints have just been dogs when it comes to stopping wide receivers. I, I wanted to you know, put Elijah Moore in all of my, uh, you know, DFS lineups, but I don't have the confidence now anymore. And if he sits, I think you've got a PPR Jamison Crowder play Crowder. Uh, Crowder is in play. Even if Elijah Moore is so that was, active, that was dogs as in like bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah dogs is, that, is, is that a phrase? Yes, you can no, use it yes. both ways. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it dog is an incredible but word, but you could also be like, They've been dogs against the run. Yeah, and like shut it down. Real He's aggressive. got some dog in him. Yeah, I, I don't woof, know. Woof. I don't know why we've decided that that animal is. It could be everything from good. Well, I mean, to great to I've bad. seen some really cute dogs, <laughs> and I've seen some really ugly dogs. Brooks has got some cat in him. Ooh, that's <laughs> see, see, that that's doesn't never, sound as good. No, that's never a good. That's only derogatory. Oh man, okay. meow. <laughs> Oh, I have to bring it up now. You know, my, my middle name is just an initial, the letter it's, C. Yeah, we, we know. It stands for cat. That's, oh, no. That's a joke that's been among my friends for a while. <laughs> Brooks, Brooks cat, cat Carmine. Carmine. So, yeah. Like, are you, um, you don't have any pets, right? Not yet. C Wait, for what's cat. Wait, co what's coming? A cat or a dog? Both. Oh, okay. One All of right. each. That's one way to win that argument. 
Well, I hope to not take sides, Brooks. How how Switzerland of you? (laughs) Yeah. Now, how Brooks of me? Um, Yeah. They're both great. Uh, I do think Jamison Crowder is very interesting in this game. Yes. Um, They Uh, can't. They they can't play like he was okay last week. If Elijah Moore is limited, like he is a safety valve. I am playing him. I think he's going to have a better than expected week. I agree, and I I think Elijah Moore will play. I mean, day to day. Missing a Wednesday practice, it it seems okay. It, He's got some dog in him. Yeah, it it felt more ominous because Coach Sala was like, "Well, we'll see if we have him," and I think that was, I I don't know. It's start just, start a wide receiver from the the Saints. Do it. No, go trade no. one. I mean, if I have to. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. That's it's okay. Yes, yeah, tra- or or is it Lil Jordan? What do you do with the running back room in New York? Well, I keep t- wanting to move on from this matchup, yeah, I understand. and I can't do it because we have to talk through these. There's nuggets. I don't really want to start I- any of them because the Saints have still been good against the run. Their personnel is better than the Jets' personnel, and uh, you know, it's there's not a lot of clarity to the running back room over the course of the season. It's kind of shifted a couple times, which just says they're going to do whatever they want. Um, so I, I'm not looking. I would start a Kareem Hunt. Um, I would start. Uh, um, uh, Daryl Williams uh, over this core. All right, um, Dallas Cowboys eight and four taking on the six and six on fire Washington football team. Are they on fire? They're not on fire. They've just won several games, uh, four four games in a row. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean how do you define fire? Surviving each game, they're they're survival wins. They're all like. They yeah, are. we did it again. Yeah, but a win's a win. I know. I don't want to take and anything away from row. them. They've, they've been gritty. They've found a way to get it done. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cowboys minus four and a half on the road. That tells you everything you need to know. If you win four straight games and you're at home against your division mate and you're a four and a half point underdog, yeah. those wins were by the skin of your teeth. The over-under is 48 here. What are the big question marks in this game for you? Maybe start with the backfield for Dallas and, and go from there. That's where you have to start because Ezekiel Elliott has not been himself. And he every every time he's asked about the injury, it's always, well, no, what, what injury? He's real dodgy. But now we just recently got an update here that Tony Pollard, who did not practice yesterday, they're saying that he sprained his foot on his touchdown run last Thursday. They're hopeful that he will play, but that – That is the quote, that's, hopeful. That sounds real sketchy that this happened last Thursday and you're still not able to practice on the uh, the following Wednesday. And you're Wednesday. signing, guys. Yes. Follow the transactions. It, uh, I, I easily see Pollard – Follow the miss, money and missing, see where it goes. Yeah, missing this game. Well, either way, the, the prescription is don't play him. I right. mean, if, if you think that he could be limited – this is an opportunity for Zeke to have the majority of the work and Tony Pollard to be maintained. They need him more in the playoffs. Can Zeke handle it, though? Well, he can try. He can <laughs> handle it. I don't think he's going to be efficient or effective with it. The Washington football team has been really good. They're number seven in the last six weeks against the run. Um, top 12 on to the season. to get Chase Young out of there. So, yeah, they they got to – well, you know, sometimes you, you lose a pass rusher, you gain a run blocker. Um so I, I would say that Zeke will be a solid workload play. Um, score probably. And he, yeah, like over the, the last six games, he's averaging 12 carries for 40 yards. You don't yards. need to tell us the stats. I mean, everybody knows I'm just, he's been absolutely <laughs> atrocious. He, that's been very Troy Aikman came out and said he looks hurt. Like, the news we got on the knee yesterday is that it's not a bone bruise, according to Zeke, and that the MRI showed that it's improving. And he can't hurt it by playing on it. Those are the three things that came out yesterday. I believe if you set the line of 15 and a half rushing attempts, I would take the over okay. for Zeke, which he has not been getting recently. I think he does in this and, game. And the big thing, if Paul, if Pollard misses, you're going to get third down Zeke. I mean, you already got him sometimes on third down. Sure. But you are going to get more dump off opportunities. Speaking of opportunities, Antonio Gibson, since the week nine by 26-19, 36-29, he went – his shin is feeling so good. He's he's getting the Gibson. I mean, this is this is the reason I moved him was because he wasn't doing this. He wasn't getting opportunities. Now, McKissick will be back this week. 
but the shin seems fine for Gibson. After the bye week, he recovered, and they're winning football games or keeping them close. And those two parts are why Gibson gets the opportunities that he does because if you let Taylor Heineke throw the football, it's a risk. Yeah, I mean, it, you you just said it. It's They've been winning the games. And if you're winning or the game is close, Antonio Gibson becomes their offense. This one, they are not favored. Um, Dallas could easily come out and jump out to a lead. Uh, but that's really what you're – I mean, you said you traded him when he wasn't getting the work. They lost four games in a row, went on by, and now have won four games in a row. And if you look at the stretch of success and failure for Antonio Gibson, it's just they were losing, they couldn't utilize him or – yeah, he wasn't Thought healthy. They couldn't utilize him. They, they could, he was not healthy. Uh, he looks better. And just an update for McKissick on Wednesday, he did. He worked on the side. Uh, he didn't tar uh, participate in practice, though, just off the side. So there's still no, there's still no guarantee that McKissick makes it back to this game, and that has turned into not just a bunch of carries, but. Some passing game work. Six targets last week, seven targets the week before that. I mean, that is a huge boost to the the floor for Antonio Gibson. Uh, Washington has spent approximately $1.4 million per touch for <laughs> Curtis Samuel this year. Oh, that's yeah. rough. Very nice. Uh, Ricky Seals-Jones. Yeah. Are you interested? I uh, am interested. Um, we saw him step in the last time around. How interested? I like am, how would you orate that? I, I would say that he is a low-end tight end one. He is a decent – oh, I get you. you. I'm sorry. You were looking for my oh, – oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Now it seems manufactured. Yeah. I was, I'm was. i disappointed. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed too in myself. <laughs> sorry, Mom. Um, but you were saying – Yeah, I mean, he, he did step in. Um, was a, when he was in, he was a hundred percent of the snaps and that turned into multiple top 12 performances. Yeah. So, and Dallas has not been a shutdown tight end matchup. So yeah, Ricky Seals Jones is, is fine. I would not start him over the doctor, um, on the other side of the field, right. the, you know, uh, would you play Conklin tonight or I would play Conklin. Okay. Over Schultz. Over, o over both, Ricky Seals over Ricky Seals Jones. Uh, is Michael Gallup in every week flex right now? Ooh. No, I don't think so. I mean, this last game, you still is he had in every a, third week flex. <laughs> possibly. I think <laughs> one of the big categories of fantasy. I think he's a matchup play. Um, this last week, you had Amari Cooper still coming back off of COVID, not having, um, you know, his gas tank on full. You could see that out there on the field. Um, another week removed. I think, I think the expectation is Cooper should be back up to full strength this week. We just had a quote on that, actually. Mark McCarthy said, when he was asked, will he have a full workload? He said, I have no reason to think he won't. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so Cooper's in. Lamb is obviously in. He's and then he said, but I don't really pay attention to anything around here. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously Terry McLaurin, we talked about a ton on yesterday's episode. You can go back and listen. He is uh, he's a borderline I'm still, every week starter. I'm still playing him this week. The matchup is there. It's Diggs. What? Yeah, I mean, the Cowboys are 23rd against fantasy wide receivers the past six weeks, 27th on the season. It's Curtis Samuel week. No, oh, it's not. Oh, yeah, baby. It's never. Oh, yeah, baby. I would I would love it. I like Curtis, but I'm just, I'm, are Didn't, you guys – When's the last time we had a Curtis Samuel week? Was that oh, before was the pandemic? Definitely I mean, before the pandemic. So for Terry McLaurin, are you guys playing like, let's see, uh, Chase uh, Claypool tonight or Terry McLaurin? McLaurin. Claypool. The matchup is so good tonight. The, ma the matchup's good for Terry as well. Uh, Van Jefferson against Arizona or Terry McLaurin? McLaurin. Yeah, I'll do McLaurin on that one. Brandon Ayuk against the Cincinnati Bengals. McLaurin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hollywood Brown. Or McLaurin. <laughs> oh, man, that one's really close. McLaurin. Uh, Hollywood. <laughs> McHollywood. <laughs> McCollywood. Hey, Brooksy, do we uh, want to get into the starts now? or Let's do it. Starts of the week. Can I, can I just not have a quarterback start? I mean, I'm going to be, tra sure. I'm gonna be transparent with the, the foot clan. I, I like both of yours significantly better. Um, I mean, Jason's is clearly a great start. And Mike, I like yours better. But 
I just I couldn't get any. It's a weird. Get, get yours out of the way then. That my, I couldn't get to full confidence, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say Big Ben tonight. Okay. Um, Minnesota. What I saw yes, I mean they lost last week to the Lions. Jared Goff won the Offensive Player of the Week. Do you realize he this? did? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. That's delightful. Um, and and that feels like a sympathy. For sure. That was, hey, you won a game. Well, it feels like a sympathy. Give and the Lions a trophy. A sympathy <laughs> and a secondary. And the secondary for Minnesota is is really bad. Um, they've been the the fourth best quarterback matchup over the last eight. It was even worse last week. These games, uh, you know, fifth most yards per play, two viable game breakers in Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson. You got the Muth. And um, so here, start- here's the last. I, I want people to know when they reacted to the Big Ben. This is not good player, good matchup. This is okay player, bad player, good matchup. But he's had top 12 performances in two of three weeks. So I think he can make it three of four in this matchup tonight. Derek Carr or Big Ben? Big right. Ben. Big Ben. Cam Newton or Big Ben? That one's really hard. I, I guess I would probably go... I think if I'm a, a favorite, I'm playing Big Ben. Okay. If I'm an underdog, I'll play Cam. All right. Um, I'm going uh, with my start of the week, Aaron Rodgers, uh, coming back. Um, you're st- wait, you're going with your start of the week I'm, for your start of the week? Yes, I am indeed. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Look, if you remember the last game against <laughs> Chicago, that was the game he was yeah. caught screaming into the stands. I still own you because he does. He's 21-5 and five against Chicago as a starter. He hasn't lost to them at home since 2015. He's been a stone-cold killer for fantasy in Lambeau this year, averaging 23 fantasy points a game, three top five finishes. In week six, he had three total touchdowns against Chicago, finishes the quarterback nine. This week, I expect even more. He's coming off the bye. He's going to smash this week. Uh, Must start. And I'm going with Taysom Hill against the New York Jets. Since the Jets' bye week, they have allowed top 10 quarterback production in five of seven games, and that includes Gardner Minshew, Right off of the bench into a viable fantasy player. Minshew right there. Oh. Minshew off the bench? I mean, you could have. I mean, that's a joke for you. It's a joke for you, Mike. You would have made it funny. Oh, well, I mean, I make you know, most jokes are very funny. They, <laughs> Taysom Hill, like he had 100 rushing yards. He threw, he threw four interceptions last week. Don't matter. Don't matter because fantasy scoring for quarterbacks is completely broken if they run, and he will run. The Jets, they're allowing the highest yards per attempt, the highest quarterback rating, the highest first down rate. Their defense is bad, and Taysom Hill is a cheat code for fantasy, and I think he's going to have great success against the New York Jets. My running back start of the week is Leonard Fournette. Okay. The Steelers have been the worst against the run in the last four weeks, the Bills have been the second worst. The Leonard Fournette reality is he is a stud. He leads all running backs in receptions. He averages 4.8 per game. That's an amazing floor. This is going to be a fun competitive game. It's in Tampa. Um, 60% of the touchdowns that Buffalo gives up are on the ground. That's number one in the NFL. I think that this is uh, a smash play for Lenny to stay in the flames. Yep. Um, At running back, I am going with Javante's Inferno. Uh, Javante Williams, running back, beautiful running back for the uh, Denver Broncos. Heck yeah. He's beautiful. He's a gorgeous man when he's out there breaking tackles. Did we mention at the top that Melvin Gordon did return to practice? Yeah. uh, And I wanted to say that this is a Javante. If Melvin Gordon is back, if he is back, do not bench Javante Williams against Detroit. He's going to have a great game. Obviously, last work, he had all the work to himself. 31 opportunities, had 178 total yards, 25% market share. But the Lions are the bread pudding of NFL defenses. They are delicious. (laughs) You keep going back for more and more. They have allowed the fifth most rushing yards, fourth most fantasy points to the running back position. Here's how good Javante's been. If you're not aware, I know we've been talking him up for a while. We knew the breakout was coming last week. But Javante has forced 47 missed tackles on his rush attempts. That's that's second behind only Jonathan Taylor. He's only five behind Jonathan Taylor, who has 101 more carries to do that. Javante is great. Denver or Detroit is bad. 
Um, I'm starting him with Melvin Gordon active. I can't believe you went down to the bread pudding. Like, mm. Foot Clan, understand how much Jason Moore loves bread pudding. If it's on the menu, you got to get it. It's kind of a rule. And and not only is it a rule, uh, they say, sir, uh, could I offer you some dessert? And he goes, bread pudding! That is what I do. It's not even a joke. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> bread pudding! <laughs> Oh, oh, delightful. My running back start of the week, it's Clyde Edwards-Alaire against the Las Vegas Raiders, who are allowing top 10 production to the running back position the last month. Fourth worst over that time. I mean, right back into it, 51% of snaps and 17 opportunities. I feel like that is, is his floor. And like just to highlight how bad Vegas has been, allowing the seventh most rushing yards and the sixth most points per drive. I think that the Chiefs find some mojo in Clyde has a great game on the ground and he's getting a couple targets here or there. We all have wide receivers that we expect to bounce back this week. Mine is DK Metcalf. He has been brutal, but Houston will have a problem with oh. D with DK. They're allowing the fourth most plays per game, but they stopped T Y Houston. Uh, well, that's the, quite the accomplishment for them. Uh, not for anyone else. Uh, they're, they're a great matchup for DK the team is going to force feed him this week. And uh, he saw 50% of the team's air yards last week. They are piling up. It is going to happen. I think he'll score twice this week. Oh, very nice. At wide receiver, I'm going Darnell Mooney in Green Bay in Lambeau last what? week. What? Last With week, Justin I did. Justin Fields. Yeah, I did not recommend the strategy of mooning your opponent this week. I'm pants down, baby. Uh, with Justin Fields in, Cheeks I'm willing to. Out. I'm willing to plug bread pudding. <laughs> bread. Oh no! Don't call that the bread pudding. No, that's not okay. <laughs> not okay. <laughs> pants up, bread pudding. Pants down is a Mooney. Um, we are. Is that is that bread pudding? <laughs> oh no! Here's the thing. Uh, Darnell Thanks, Mooney. Right, now, be now be serious, let's, Jason. Let's be real. Be, be an analyst. Let's from be uh, my bread pudding. Man, I might not order bread pudding anymore. <laughs> At this point, that dessert is over. It's ruined. Um, hmm. Oh, man. I hope somebody out there is eating bread pudding right what now. A shame. Me, me too, for their sake. It's delicious. Uh, but Darnell Mooney, <laughs> he's been great. I, I, I recommended benching him last week. This week, I think the, the matchup is good. Uh, Green Bay seeing the highest percentage of 20-plus yard targets in the league. People are attacking there. His 4-3-8 speed will get it done. He's already gone 4 for 45 with a touchdown against, against Green Bay. And most importantly, I'm 100% so far on calling uh, my shot on Mooney. Benching oh. last week. He was my start of the week on the Megalodon show when he went 5 for 123. Put him in your lineup. He's going to have a good week. I'm going with Jamar Chase to have the bounce back. He had the touchdown in hand last week. He just bobbled it. San Francisco, the best, sixth best matchup for wide receivers over the past month. The targets are still there. We highlighted him and never not working. Uh, that the variance has just it hit the other direction for him. He still leads the team in end zone targets. Uh, I'm playing... I'm playing Chase, and I expect the good week to, to be back. If you would like the opportunity to laugh at me, do it momentarily. Evan Ingram is my start of the week at tight end. <laughs> I, will, I will never. I will, uh, whenever someone supports Evan Ingram, I support them. I was enjoying the inevitability. of. I know how happy In, I will be. Inevitability? Oh, no, I, I, no, I, I, no, I fell off. Oh, bad. Um, I'll do it. Evan Ingram is – look, I didn't want to go easy pick here at tight end. The Chargers are absolutely brutal against the tight end position. We are still searching for meaning and purpose at the tight end. I We looked at stats yesterday. The, there's the top three tight ends. And then – or sorry, the top two. And then there's like a 14-point gap between like three and ten at the position. They're all the same. Mm -hmm. So you are, you're essentially streaming the position. And I think that this is a week where you're going to see the necessity of Ingram against the Chargers defense that allows, you know, you talk about run funnel. They also are a tight end funnel. They, they, they protect the, the deep routes and the outside and tight ends manage to score against them. So I'm going to take the matchup and I can't wait to see how many passes Evan Ingram drops. <laughs> Um, I'm going <clears throat> Dawson Knox after 
the down week in the Snow Bowl last week. Oh man, he had a disaster he, of a week. He had a couple of drop hard hard to catch passes, still. but he could have won the game for them in the end zone if he yeah. just comes down with that ball. He's still being targeted. He's still on the field. Ninety three percent snaps since he got back from the injury. He's had two top ten uh, tight end weekly performances. Tampa Bay is allowing the highest opponent pass rate in the NFL, the seventh most fantasy points to tight ends. I actually personally, you know, two great defenses in the Buccaneers and the Bills. I'm going to take the over in that game. I think the two great quarterbacks wins. A lot of touchdowns flying back and forth, and that spells success for Dawson Knox and probably Gronk too. My tight end stream of the week. It's tonight. Conk, conk, baby. Yeah. Tyler Conklin. From <laughs> th <laughs> thank you. From streamable to a Mr. Necessary, nine targets last week when Adam Thielen went down right at the very beginning of the game. He averages a healthy 28 routes per week. Like he was already, you know, he was already a streamable option, but they really will need him. And uh, the Vikings will put up points against this Pittsburgh Steelers secondary. And Conklin's averaging 10 yards per reception. So it just takes a few. You get a couple of those play action opportunities near the end zone, and Conk becomes a primary weapon with Adam Thielen no longer there. I'm streaming him tonight. All the rankings, the start, sit, tool, and everything else on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Without further ado. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Can you just remind us where we're at? I do feel sure. like that's important. Last what time, happened last, last week? Last week on the Boom Boom. Um, uh, I After the dump on the Mega, he snapped at my Hedda. Um, and so I got rescued by Greg Joseph in a hang lighter. Okay. Oh, that's, that's where right. we're at. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> proceed. Okay. Proceed. Okay. Flying. I went full Julie Andrews, floating down like Mary Poppins. I crop dusted that landing <laughs> and was greeted by the Chargers, Dustin Hopkins. Now, does he have clothes on? I believe I did. I thought he got some shorts I think or I something. Got, I think I'm clothed. <laughs> and what, what, what does that mean, the landing? Oh, you don't know a good crop dusting? Well, my question is, you were... Greeted by by uh, 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 this kicker, mm -hmm. did you crop dust him? Oh, I mean, yeah, of course. I I'm I'm crop dusting the landing. <laughs> he is at the land the landing, and he is so, breathing my okay, innards. Okay, so 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 you're staying in the the potty humor, right? I have never left. I thought. See, I know I know what the traditional definition of that is. I just thought maybe it had a different meaning on the landing. You're just saying. As you landed, mm -hmm. there was he was a, there was a remainder. He mm -hmm. was just doing a little toot toot. Yeah, uh, it wasn't little, but uh, thank you. Um, okay. No, it cropped us the heck out of that. Now, landing. can we give two beats before we thank Pristine Auction, just so I could separate the context? One here? one thousand, two, two one thousand. All right, thank you, Pristine Auction, for supporting the show. You can head to pristineauction.com right now. There's a signed DeAndre Swift jersey for twenty seven bucks. A DJ Moore signed jersey. It's currently on auction for eleven dollars. So you oh. can go compete and win some sweet sports autographed memorabilia. PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS. BALLERS. More matchups on tomorrow's show. Mike ends up spinning the wheel of shame this week. Did by, you remember, Mike? By point eight, yeah, I remember. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.